We live in a world where undernutrition and obesity can exist side, side by side in the same country, home, or even person. Foods high in sugars, salt, and or unhealthy fats are leading to unhealthy diets and are one reason why children may not be growing healthily while causing other people to develop overweight or obesity. The consumption of unhealthy diets is heavily influenced by marketing. Easy access is fueling this new nutrition reality, but thankfully, change towards a healthier future is possible. By having a sustainable healthy diet made up of a variety of foods that are safe for consumption, we can promote health and have better abilities to fight illness. How do we do this? Good nutrition for women during pregnancy and for children in their first 1,000 days of life, including breastfeeding, sets them up for healthy adulthood and future generations. We should eat more fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, pulses, nuts and seeds, and less sugary drinks and foods high in sugars, salt and unhealthy fats. The less of these foods we buy, the more the food industry will be encouraged to produce foods that contribute to healthy diets. We can also call on our leaders to make the right decisions so that every person everywhere can afford and access good nutrition. When people like you and me, industries and governments work together to make positive changes, we can create a healthier world. We live in a world where undernutrition and obesity can exist side by side in the same country, home, or even person. Foods high in sugars, salt, and or unhealthy fats are leading to unhealthy diets and are one reason why children may not be growing healthily while causing other people to develop overweight or obesity. The consumption of unhealthy diets is heavily influenced by marketing. Easy access is fueling this new nutrition reality. But thankfully, change towards a healthier future is possible. By having a sustainable healthy diet made up of a variety of foods that are safe for consumption, we can promote health and have better abilities to fight illness. How do we do this? Good nutrition for women during pregnancy and for children in their first 1,000 days of life, including breastfeeding, sets them up for healthy adulthood and future generations. We should eat more fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, pulses, nuts and seeds, and less sugary drinks and foods high in sugars, salt and unhealthy fats. The less of these foods we buy, the more the food industry will be encouraged to produce foods that contribute to healthy diets. We can also call on our leaders to make the right decisions so that every person everywhere can afford and access good nutrition. When people like you and me, industries and governments work together to make positive changes, we can create a healthier world. जो जो हम ट्राइबल एरियाज में जाते हैं तो स्टंटिंग पड़ता जाता है 
मुख्य रूप से उनका है कि जब कई पीढ़ियों से उनको पोषण नहीं मिला तो उनकी हाइट कम रहती है उनका वजन कम रहता है उनका दुबलापन रहता है और उनकी एफिशिएंसी कम होती है शरीर को लाभदायक है उनके बारे में सभी दीदियों को बताना और घर घर जा करके प्रेरित करना समझाओगे भी और खड़ा होकर के लगवा भी सात प्रकार के क्यारी बनाते हैं अलग अलग और सातों भाजी में तो एक एक क्यारी में डालते हैं तो फर्स्ट दिन हमने एक क्यारी का तोड़ा सेकंड दिन दूसरा क्यारी का तीसरे दिन तीसरा क्यारी का ऐसे लगातार हमारा सात दिन सप्ताह हो गया तो लगातार सात दिन सप्ताह खत्म होने तक यानी फर्स्ट वाला क्यारी का तैयार हो गया Thank you. 
Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Hello. Hello. Good morning, sir. Gana, sir, can you hear me? Gana, sir, are you there? Sir, are you there? Can you hear me? Good morning. Hello. Hello. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Is good audible? Morning, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is audible, no? Yes, yes, sir. We okay. can hear you. Uh, sir, yeah, yeah. can you please switch on your camera? Camera, okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir, and welcome Share to this forum. Good morning, yeah, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Insight uh, Day 5 of the, this faculty development program in home science. We have an amazing speaker with substantial eminence and knowledge. He is uh, Professor Gyanaranjan Rauth. Head of the Department Share of Agriculture and Biotechnology, Odisha University of Agriculture and Technology, Bhubaneswar. And this session will be hosted by Dr. Subhangi and Dr. Gautami. So I would like to request now Dr. Subhangi um, to give the guest introduction. Thank you. Subhangi, ma'am, over to you. Ma'am, this is Dr. Gautami. Okay. okay. Good, good morning. Good morning, one and all. Good morning, one and all. In the fifth day, right? it is my privilege to introduce before all of you our resource person, Professor Gyanaranjan Rao, head Department of Agriculture Biotechnology, OUAT, Bhuvaneswar. Professor Rao has a PhD and DSc degree from Utkala University. Currently, he is working as a head department of agricultural biotechnology, OUAT. He has also worked at the Federal Research Center on Ornamental and Plant Breeding in Germany. He has been associated with different universities abroad in his academic capacity. He has been awarded multiple fellowships like SCRC Visiting Fellowship, Hoy Cost Fellow, Overseas Fellowship, and FAOIAEA Fellowship, to name a few. There are several other fellowships like National Academy of Sciences, Allahabad, Fellow of Indian Society of Plant Genetic Resources. He has been awarded with the prestigious Samantha Chandrasekhara Award in 2005 in the field of life sciences. He has published out more than 217 publications in national and international journals and three edited books. He has guided 46 postgraduate and 13 PhD scholars for the research investigation. So without wasting any time, let me now request our resource person, Professor Rao, to start his presentation. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for a nice introduction. So, I am very much uh, Honorable uh, Vice Chancellor, Ramadevi Women's University, Re respected this, the Dean of uh, the Head of the Department Home Science and the esteemed member of the organizing committee and all these participants, today participants, uh, the present in the, the, the seminar. I am very much uh, thankful to the organizer committee to invite me online faculty development program in home science. So, uh, dear president, today I will speak about this enhancing nutritional quality of food through transgenic research. This is though is a, some of the participants may have some knowledge on this, 
but it i want to share this uh, to, uh, till date information up to date information on transgenic research and uh, for the development of develop the, the variety of crop nutritional value and it has slide now Is it visible to everyone? Hello. No, sir. Uh, Hello. Sir, you want to share your screen? It's now visible. Sir, you want to share your screen? No, no, sir. Yeah, yeah. Then? No, sir. You're I not able to share to... my slide. I'm sharing my slide. No, sir, we are not getting anything. Not able to see. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Can I say, um, you have seen my slide? No, sir. It's coming. Have you seen, please? No, sir. It's not coming. Sir, can you please send your slides to us so that uh, we will try from our side? Okay. So I have to mail you, no? I have to send you, no, by mail. Screen setting already, no? Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, we can hear you. Allow me to share. Hello. Hello. Sir, we can hear you, sir. You allow me to share my slide. You allow me to share my slide. Okay, sir. Chinmay, are you there? Chinmay? Sir, you are allowed, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Sir, you are the co-host. So you can share you your... Uh... Yes, sir. You are the co-host. You can share this, sir. Hello. Sir, 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 can you send me the slides in, the, in WhatsApp? We can share your slides from here. Sir, can you hear me?
हेलो Sir, am I audible to you? Sir, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, your voice is breaking. Uh, sir, can you please share your slides to my WhatsApp? Yeah, I'm sending the, uh, your WhatsApp. Okay. Sir, are you sharing your slide uh, or, or any other person uh, who has uh, yeah, shared? Uh, yeah, it, in other, other laptop I'm um, presenting. Sir, uh, sir, name please, uh, the user, so that we co-host huh? them. HP? Sir, HP, HP, okay. H okay, HP. Okay, sir. Thank you. Hmm? What's up, sir? Sir, is he connected us to Zoom? Yeah. Okay. Sir, just send me your slides into my WhatsApp. It's now also not coming. No, sir. Okay. So what's the model? Mm -hmm. In number nine, double five. Send this in. Nine double five. Six, six five. five. Eight five. Eight five seven eight zero. Seven eight zero. Madam, you please mail it, please. Okay. Uh, sir, I can. Okay. Sir, in WhatsApp, I, I'm sending yeah, you. Yeah, please. Yes, sir. I can. Uh, please send me the. Sir, I sent you. Yeah. Attach Kurno, sit down. Sir, I have already sent you. Okay, yes, now. Yes, come now. A J A A J A N T A dot N N A Y K six six. Capital A. No. Capital A. Who is that? No. At direct gmail dot com. Gmail dot com. It's more than twenty five. I admit that share the share the share of 
Yes, sir. We can see. But, you can uh, see able to see. Yes, sir. We are able to see, but uh, it's not clear. I think uh, because of already, already I have sent, and if if DG is showing, then it is possible to continue. But uh, it's not clear actually. Clear means uh, not visible. It's visible, but not clear. Oh, it's not audible. Sir, the your slides are not, I mean, the letters that those okay. things are not clear. Okay, so I have already only... sent. Please okay. check, I have already sent. But I have not received anything. Okay. Sir, let's start. We can. But, but it is not visible, you said, no? Yes, sir. It's yes, visible. sir. Now it's visible. Sir, we can see now. It's clear. Okay. Okay. So, you, uh, please one minute. You have sent no mail to madam. Madam, one minute, please. I have to check yes, whether you have received or not, and then I will start. Madam, is it very slow? It's going on. Okay, sir. It's going on PPT to you. So, I am also continuing now. It's visible. <laughs> Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Sorry for the delay. So this is my the topic which enhancing nutritional quality of the food. Is it audible, please? If it's not audible, please let me know. Yes, yes, it is audible, audible. Sir. And also I have received now your all your slides. Yeah, and it is the tangent tangent. This slide, ma'am, uh, having the some of the my research, recent research. So it cannot be shared to others, please. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Because I am putting my some of the, my research in this uh, to to. Okay, sir. I'll take care of that. I'll take care. Okay. Of that. So this is my topic today. So why? Because the, the topic allotted to me the GM crop. So this uh, this global population. Why you should go for this uh, transgenic crops? The global population is a, is, a, uh, is, a, is day by day is increasing. It is expected in 2006, 8.6 billion. And by 2050, it's 9.7 billion. And this 2021, you will be having 1.2 billion. So we need for the food for these people of the, of the world. So roughly 83 million people added every population in every year. So research experts for a long time believe that food production must be doubled by 2050 to fit to the world um, this growing population. So according to this, and uh, we need, there is a climatic change and a number of uh, new pests and number of new diseases coming. So we want to improve our productivity, not only the productivity crop only, also this uh, the other food also fish, and also the poultry, everything we need. So on in this ground, this farmer needs also to hold the nutrients in the field, in the adding to the nutrient to the field and reduce the greenhouse gas emission, and improve the soil health also. So so many factors are involved to get a new nutritionally food to get a good food for good for health so on this uh, i have i have been showing some of the picture and which is a infection of the pest attack to the onion plants how this uh, this uh, the production will be lost how the photosynthetic efficiency is lost because this the pest is attracting to the the plants and also in the cabbage and the cauliflower also and the farmer are using the number of the chemicals so this chemical also toxic to the human beings as well as the animals and to the health there is a lot of health problems and to think all these things 
this the technology which is a genetic modified organism or genetic modified crop and uh, um, has been uh, initiated in 1996. This is uh, some of the picture of the infection of this. So the, how to control this? This is the pest diseases as well as the climatic factor. The biological control also, mechanical control also, the chemical control by using pesticide, herbicide, insecticide, nematocyte, fungicides, so many chemical control. But there is a, another alternative that is called the genetic control. Genetic controls, there is a two ways of genetic control. So some of the many scientists, they have conducted the breeding program to improve the nutritional status of the plants. And this is the also, this is the way the loss of productivity is lost by the so many biotic and abiotic stresses. So the pest, insect, plant diseases, weeds, vertebrates, and also abiotic temperature, cold, drought, flooding, heavy metals, so many interference that the crop productivity and to increase the efficiency of the plants for the nutrition. So this is uh, one of the photograph that I'm showing how this uh, when the insect attack to the either in the root or in the leaf, how they're making the signaling plant is giving the signaling that signaling is uh, accepted and this uh, to protect to the from the diseases. So there is a traditional plant breedings, there is a conventional plant breeding, and now is the GM crop, which is called a transgenic breeding. Two types now in the modern place, it is a transgenic breeding and the traditional breeding, particularly the cross between A and B, plant A and B, and depending, it is also dependent on the family, dependent on the genotype. You cannot take a gene from the plant A to cross with the D. It's not possible in case of the traditional plant breeding. And it is also having the uh, some of the other control, environmental control is essential. It will take a long time, minimum eight to 10 years to get a good variety or a good genotype, which is having the either zinc or a uh, protein or a rich genotype. So it will take a long time. But in same time, so another breeding, this is called as a transgenic breedings. So without addition, any fertilizer, without considering any genotype. So we need a, any genes can transform from the one to another and maybe from animal to plant also. Uh, so there is also possible. And this is a, you know, this computer, if you put the input, you will get the output like this. If the gene of interest is very important to select the gene of interest, how to gene of interest and to get a pharmaceutical, to get a edible vaccine, to get a nutritional, then in all aspects, you will get to the product. So genetic modified organisms or genetic modified gen this is the um, crop. So genetic modified bacteria, genetic modified plants, genetic modified flower, genetic modified animal, genetic modified fish, in every thing, every things that protocols now has been developed in 1996 is the first initiated genetic modified crop, particularly in the in the tobacco, subsequently in the tomato, subsequently cotton. It has been developed initiated. There is a now we are in the third generation, and the 2006 is the first generation. 2000. Uh, they done, uh, 1996 is the first generation, 2006 is the second generation, 2016 onwards is the third generation of the GM product is now going on. So traditionally, Bida tries to combine the character of the two compatible related plants, which make a long time combine both desirable and undesirable character. You can't identify it. The which one is the best one, which one is the on, not needed for this uh, there is the farmer by the farmer or by the human beings, by the animals. So you can't control because it's a breeding, the cross between A and B. So uh, this is the two compatible related plants. For GM technology, the plant breeder unite desirable gene. You will be able to know whether I am adding zinc or 
all any protein rich enable by the particular one. Hello. Hello, Madam Audible. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Very very yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So this importance of genetic engineering is can be done with the plants, animal, bacteria, and other small organism. Genetic engineering allows to scientists move from gene from one plant to or animal into another. It's possible. It can also move from an animal to a plant or vice versa. Or create a genetic engineering food and different than selective breeding. And one of the problem of selective breeding is that can also result the traits that are not desired sometimes, selective breeding. So the genetic engineering, there is a specific gene to implant and the genetic engineering here in the speed up of the process, which is required in conventional breeding nine to 10 years, you can able to achieve into three to four years. Your targeted, you can able to reach and to fit to the society and fit to the population. The main possible benefit of the genetic engineering means more nutritious food, increasing the food and reduce to the cost. Cost benefit is more, longer is the self life, faster growing plants and animals, disease, all the abiotic stresses, disease, flood, drought resistance, and the less use of pesticides is very limited use of the pesticides. And also medicinal food could be used as a vaccine. And like the banana is a edible banana vaccine also now is available in also other medicine. And this is the recombinant DNA technology is, has been, have been employed to create genetic modified crops, the crops and animals, pharmaceutical product and for the use of the human beings. So this is the way is the, there is a physical method and biological methods. There is a two way is possible. But initially the scientist and uh, they have a uh, used to the physical mode of uh, transfer of the gene from in the genome introduction is uh, the test is very late. So subsequently, in 1994, they have initiated is the biological means of genetic transformation. So biological means genetic transformation, that is, they have been using agrobacterium tumefensis, agrobacterium rhizogenesis. Two agrobacterial strain they have used for this. So agrobacterium tumefensis, which because why I am little bit expressing because this is a home science. So some of these uh, participants might have, didn't have a, not much knowledge about this. That's why I'm able to speak a little bit uh, deeper. So this, uh, the, around this uh, biological, uh, this is a genetic transformation, agrobacterium tumefensis, agrobacterium rhizogenesis. Rhizogenesis only helpful for a root tumoring substances. It will be able to, whatever these medicinal plants they have used to enhance, in the root, having some of the plants is having the root um, inducing the, the medicinal components. So that can be induced. You can able to multiply the same root in your lab, in your room itself, in your culture room itself is around two kg, three kg, which can not be possible in the field because field, if you do the one acre of land of the cultivation, so it is having the lot of the environmental impact, maybe, uh, maybe temperature, maybe rain, maybe flood, maybe pest. So a lot of interference. But if you do in the lab itself, in control condition, there will be no need for any environmental contamination. So you can able to enrich your medicinal product through agrobacterium rhizogenesis. Enrich, you can able to some of the you can able to use, you can able to enhance. You can able to produce, you can able to enhance. Another one, agrobacterium tumefensis is a biological one, and it is a, used for the genetic transformation in the crop as a large. So genetic engineering is the one, but molecular marker, molecular diagnosis, vaccine, molecular farming. One, you will multiply it to millions. This is way of the molecular farming. So. The advantage of molecular biology, which is a molecular biology is very essential for to do this type of research because you have to identify your gene of interest 
is there in the new genotype is or not, you need a molecular and the southern blotting and northern blotting, you have to do all. So you have to knowledge from this little molecular biology knowledge. So engineering plants of resistance to disease, engineering plant resistance to pest, RNA interference, gene silencing also, you can able to made also through agrobacterium also. So um, the RNA interference technology, disease management through RNA, so that you can knock out the gene, suppose one of the variety having the high reach of the zinc, high reach of the iron, high reach of the protein, you have to, but it is a very weak to the diseases. So we have to knock out that, that gene so that the plant will survive. So transgenic plant disease management, so this is the also the gene against the bacterial pathogen, the gene against the fungal pathogen. So also bioremediation, phytoremediation also possible through the transgenic technology. Bioremediation and phytoremediation is also possible because development of the metal tolerant plant and the development of the some of the I mean, dot tolerant you can able to maintain to the in my the metal rich area. So there is a does horizontal gene transfer occur in nature? Yes. This is how we originally learned to do the plant genetic engineering. And uh, next is the agrovectum based. This is the biological technique. Practical isolation. This is the physiological, uh, this uh, physical technique also. Electroporation, micro injection. These are the all the techniques the scientists they have used in the 1996 up to 2004, five, like they didn't success in more than 10%, they have switched over to agrovectrium. Agrovectrium initially, it was very good successful in the dicot, dicot plant, but after that monocot, it was very unsuccessful, but in the 2006, seven onwards, they have succeeded, scientists have succeeded in the monocot in large scale. So this is the way of the methodology and how this gene is integrated to the plants. And this is, you can see this A is agrovectum and C is the screening of the cell with the transgenes, B is the gene gun. And you have seen the photographs, how gene is introduced in the TI plasmid and the TI plasmid integrates to the plant cell. And the plant cell, it will move to the plant genome and is a chromosome and it is multiplied, then you will have to screen it, screen of the transgenes. And the transgenes means the gene is available in the plants is transgenes. So this transform plant selected to have to check with the selective marker because gene has been const constructed with the lame, this the right border, red right border and the selectable marker plasmid, all these is, is the gene construct. So to transform plants, you have to verify, check with the marker that is transferred to the field. And once you get to the transform plants, so then you have to multiply it and you have to screen in the T1 generation, T2 generation, T3 generation, and so on up to T5 generation. And so that you will select a new genotype which enriches of the vitamins or these nutrients or any kind of the stress genes. And like this of the gene gun and the gene gun method also they have people have used, but not much successful. And they have a use of the same of the gene with the direct bombardment with the in vitro culture source. In vitro technique is very essential to do the genetic transformation study. If you do not have a protocol from cell to regenerate plants, there is no meaning to doing the transgenic research. Because the, when you are transformed to the gene of interest to the genome, that cell need to be regenerate. Regenerate, that means it needs that protocol to be established so that the cell can be multiplied, cell can be, the transgenes can be multiplied and can be regenerated into complete plants. So this is the this is the way you do selection of the this is the another uh, the photographs which is how this is the selection you see the selection method and the, the recombinant plasmid agrovectum to the enter TI plasmid to the plant cell and plant cell is having the gene of interest to desiring the DNA then to the selection medium from selection to adult plant expressing that traits. This is the way of the procedure and I will show you another 
Uh, the, how this is, gene is going to, because the plants having some the phenolic signaling, that phenolic signaling is uh, accepting by this, uh, this is the agrobacteriums. So it will be owned, it will enter to the cytoplasm and there is a number of the VIR genes, VIR A, B, C, D and uh, G and all the D1, D2, so many VIR genes, every VIR genes, they're having their own function and uh, they're entering to the T complex, um, the T plasmid complex to enter to the cytoplasm, then it start to the protein synthesis, enter to the nucleus and it's, it's combined with the new genome. This is the process we did for this, uh, the biological systems. So G crop is the either herbicide tolerance, we stand the herbicide application, insect tolerance, improve the nutrition, disease resistance, stress tolerance with the low nutrient level, excess nutrient, tolerant to stress. Crop can be stored for long to avoid spoilage losses, yeah, also, that means this the post-harvest technology also is possible. You can keeping quality also is possible. You can able to silence to the gene so that the tomato you can save for the one month. So a potato you can save also like this also so many crop. So crop that produce in the medicine and vaccine and crop make also efficient of the industrial product. So many way this technology has been used. I will come across the, some of the slide, how these technologies come forward to the 2020, they got Nobel Prize in the genome editing. So the, I'll come in later on. So this is that the country, these are the 28 and now 29 countries, they have involved in the transgenic research throughout the world at the moment. So this is the, and this they have uh, this, the, you see the one of the photograph, one of the graph, which is, I am collected from this literature and ISAA, that is, they have uh, indicated that, so there is a industrial country, developing country, developing country, industrial country, they have a lot. So in this, this developing country slowly now increase. So they have, uh, mostly they have used uh, the, how many hectares, how many hectares they have cultivating of the GM crop. And these are the, by the trade, the herbicide tolerance, insect tolerance, and the stacked traits means there is a having drought, having the um, pest, having the, uh, this is the um, cold, allergy, so many trait character. Even ill character, there is also, this is as a, in 77.7%. Herbicide is mostly the 88.7%, and the insect resistance is 23.3%. This is the data generated in 2017-18. And this is the, uh, the conventional breeding versus uh, this is the biotech crop and cotton soybean. This is uh, one of the example and a comparative study of the cotton soybean and maize and canola. And that, that also, it is indicate of this, uh, of this uh, product. And then, it's not coming. So, so, what happened? No. Later on. Pare kari bajao. It's hanging. It's, hello? Yes, sir. Is it audible? Yes, sir. Audible. Okay. So in the 96 and it has been initiated and this work of the transgenic research and it is indicated of the millions of hectares have been cultivated in 94.1 you see and in case of the uh, the color the different crops and different uh, uh, crops have been conducted in the millions of hectares this is the graph and these are the country have involved this is a the old data in 1919, this 2017, but now is the 29 country have involved. You see India, where is the India? Only 11.4 million hectare has been cultivated. And uh, because only for cotton have been adopted in India. Other and uh, though we have the protocol in India, and this is our, uh, the, uh, the, the government has didn't allow many, many, so many factors. So India is only 11.4, USA is the highest one, and next is the Brazil, Argentina. And these are the 
country have involved in the biotech research. So is the first one is the under total 29 country planted the biotech crop in 2019 data. And this is the 2019 data set is 29 countries planted the biotech crops. Africa now is coming in the double the number of biotech countries in the three to six in 2019. And the double digit growth rate is the Vietnam, Philippines, Colombia. They are also working in the transgenic research and transgenic crops for the commercialization. There is a, every country, they have a, their own regulation and to uh, controlling by the bicep issue and they are controlling their rule for this release of the product for the commercialization. Still then, and this is the, you see the photographs and even Pakistan is 2.6, India 11.6, China 3.9, and these are the country, best countries, Canada, USA, and Brazil, and Paraguay, Argentina, they are all adopting commercialization of the product and also utilized by these uh, human beings and other animals also as a food and fodder. So this is the approved, uh, the, the country now is uh, Japan. They have entered now to the use of this, use of the commercialization of the B GM crop. So this is a, mostly this is the increasing crop productivity and better environment and it's cleaning to the environments and conserving all the biodiversity, reducing of the carbon dioxide emission. And also this is the product for the, for the different nutritive value, food product. And this is as this comparison between this, how it has been a transgenic research. Initially it's a cross between two non coronal plant hybrids. Again, it comes to the whole genome duplicated mutation research comes then to the breeding, crossing species barrier, intergenetic, interspecific crosses. Then it's come to the transgenic research. Now is the cisgenic research is coming, is the, the genome editing in the single gene intersection. And you can able to multiply, you can able to remove from the nucleotides. So in particular traits, you can able to multiply it. So there is the GM crop has been commercialized in USA and you see the cotton, sugar beet, soybean, this is the canola, then papaya, alfalfa, everything is now is commercialized in USA and Canada. And it is a genetically modified, the pest resistance plants having the Bt toxin encoded transgenes, the pest resistance produce natural insecticide, there is a number of the strain, Bacillus thuringiensis, they produce ever 200 different Bt toxin now. Many toxin now is developed, it is a protein and it has been initially a Bt cotton, now Bt brinjal also developed by the India itself and it has been commercialized, adopted by the Bangladesh. So we have a, we have a 45 crop, we have a protocol, but few we have released but not released by this uh, commercialization, but its protocol has been standardized, has been kept for the future use. So the Bt toxin, what is the Bt toxin? Bt toxin is uh, having the bacillus thuringiensis. They have uh, some of the proteins, which is the endotoxin, that's crystallizes proteins. It is having molecular weight 60 to 17 kilo delta, and it's also, Inactive state as at 130, 140 kilo delta. So that toxin is entering to the, this is the mechanism how the pest when attacking to the plant have this entirely is the alkaline. The, our stomach is acidic in condition, but the pest, uh, the insect, they have uh, their stomach, the gut is having the alkali. So this is when that protein is coming to their gut and immediately they have a paralyzed. They enact activation of the protein and they have a paralyzed and they're able to die. They're unable to take that, they're unable to spoil to the crop. It's not at all possible that the toxin have been developed from the Bt and it has been a mutant and a number of more than 2000 now is developed from the different type of the proteins. And most of the Bt strain is have several different crystalline proteins. They have contained same protein is the endotoxin. And they have a, at least eight, 40 genes encoding the, the protoxin from wide range of Bt, bacillus thuringiensis isolate, isolase and sequence. And it has been utilized for this plant system. 
And this, when insect attack and eat the plant, the cryotoxin crystal get dissolved and a high pH level. Insect stomach and the activated by proteolytic enzymes into the alkaline gut juice. pH will be the 8 to 10. So this uh, cry molecule immediately, and uh, this is uh, present in the microvascular, the border of the membrane epithelial cell. So toxin is penetrated to the pore and it will, and it will be swell and it, this midgut will be collapsed and they will die immediately, paralysis. So this is the endotoxin and solubilized insect got due to the, this is the information already I have. Uh, so the cry one, cry two, cry three, cry four, so many, the cry one plus cry two, so many combination and as the scientists have succeeded, that also adopted in the potato and the tomato also. So this is that the transgenic crop, the transgenic cotton have been released from 1998. Even some of the have 2007 also and 2005. So many variety and so many related gene. You see Cry1, AC, Cry1, AC, Cry1, AC plus Cry1, 2AB. So many combination also, number of the genotype cotton they have developed. So this advantage increasing the yield of cotton due to the effective the three type of the bowl run, all the bowl one will be damaged and the, there is a no need to the use of the any chemical spray and the bowl one, the lepidotora of the bowl one will be collapsed due to the endotoxin proteins and the reduction of the cost cultivation will reduce reduction of the insecticide reduction of the predator which control to the bowl one by feeding of this larva. So many positive also advantage. And uh, there is a gene also same gene also used in cotton, maize, tomato, rice, potato, tobacco, and brinjal. See this cry one gene have been used and targeted insect pests. So many pests they have controlling due to the transgenic crops. So, so these are the these are the crop has been developed in the large scale and particularly these are the cultivated in the USA and it has been reported in the many of the journals. So another example I want to share here how to develop this beauty of the soybean soybean oil. They have a reduced to the, the fat content and they reduced to the how to do not damage to the crop that also developed in the soybean. And it has been also developed the ring spot disease viral and this is the one of the example in Popea. Transgenic Popea and because the virus is the most important disease in case of the Popea. So that uh, the damage a lot, these farmers are uh, getting and uh, they did not getting any of the product, product as well as they have uh, lost their uh, societal uh, uh, income. So for this, this the Popea ring spot disease have been controlled by the transgenic disease that is called this RNA gene silencing. So this how common are genetical engineered foods, this is at the Every crops now is used for the genetic modified. So this is a edible vaccine. What do you, you need? The edible vaccine is antigenic proteins, genetically engineered to congeal crops. And the idea is that the crop food product contain the proteins, which is derived from the disease causing pathogens. The, the, when you eat the crop, the food will digest some of the proteins make way in the bloodstream and get to the enough of this protein and bloodstream is causes immune system to develop to the immune system so that it will neutralize to the pathogen. So that is the edible vaccine, particularly in banana have been developed. So banana they have developed by India also in the, there is a center at ICR center at in the, the Kerala, they have a developed National Institute of Banana. They have a developed edible banana and uh, so that it will no need to the, those who are diabetic, they can eat and they can control the diabetic diseases. And it's also some are the use the pharmaceutical and industry protein monoclonal antibodies. You can able to use of the gene from other sources. The, it is called as a molecular farming. It can multiply in the millions, millions of the particular genes. And the protease inhibitor also, it is a alpha mileage inhibitor that also developed through the genetic engineering and it has been used for the plant systems. 
and some of the plant derived protein which causes to the oligosaccharides and uh, the lectin proteins it is the use for this through the technology it can be introduced in the plant systems so transgenic strain also and it is uh, what i have uh, said suppose some of the pest is having that some of the beneficial character some of the microbes having the beneficial traits some of the microbes of the vesicular the bham fungi they have also negative disadvantage so you can able to uh, use of the beneficial microbes you can able to multiply for the, that microbe the genetic uh, genetic modified this bacteria genetic modified of the fungus so you can able to genetic modified of the particular pest also you can able to multiply Introduce, multiply, use for the agnes to the diseases, and the low toxicity protease inhibitor, beta endotoxin, compared to the conventional insecticides, and there is a provide protection to the. This is the um, post management, management of the plant protection management. You can report how to manage to the your crop in the field that you can use able to the different uh, product of the compounds. you can develop that compound through the in the plant system or the microbial system so that is a one of the example i wants to share this is a, our research particularly we did in ouat the powdery mildew diseases powdery mildew that is having the membrane associated with the mildew is the mlo genes that is called as a mildew resistance locus o mlo family so i mean this uh, this mildew family is a membrane associated protein in seven transmembrane domain and it is conserved throughout the monocot dicot and conform to the susceptibility to fungus causing the powdery mildew disease and there is a 16 mlo genes they have a found in tomato and that also is utilized and a major contributor powdery mildew diseases and uh, in it is reported in tomato so we have uh, tried in the green gram and black gram also so that we, it is called the genome edited transformation this is a report from the published literature of the tomato how they have uh, developed to the particular the fungus resistance they have uh, developed and uh, compared to the molecular marker identified to the genotype which is, uh, is published in the 2017 scientific reports in tomato so in uh, this are the uh, this are the uh, the information and the evidence based how it is has been happened how gene is entering you can see in uh, that side and you will have some of the um, gene is introducing throughout the leaf and the, the cuticle also in have this inside to the networking of this vein also india is leading producer and uh, this is the bigna mugo the black gram and green gram that we have developed the protocol of the transformation of the particular genes and uh, so india is leading producer and consumer of the pulses pulses in india recorded 40% growth of production past 40 years and the per capita availability decline in from the 60 grams a day in 1950 now 43 grams a day in 2015 so this uh, this uh, people are not getting able on enough crop enough food for for their resistance for their sustainable so production has stabilized 18.5 million tons and the consumption is having around 22 million tons and which in estimated yearly import is the 3.5 to 4 million tons to pulses estimated about 2 billion around 2 billion us dollar so pulses are the important proteins fiber mineral rich particularly iron and this is called as a poor man food and this is a part of the diet of the indian vegetarian and where the meat is lacking the majority of the poorest our population of the 1.3 billion people so new we need a protein this crop is a the leguminous crop and pulses so this is the protocol you see you can able to see the picture and this is the protocol we have developed how the cell have been multiplied have cell will be multiplied 
and has you see the root indexation and it has been inter this is a transgenic you see the blue color here this is the variety of the vigna radiata ipm 0 to 14 how this gene has been integrated in the leaf itself total the plant genome itself is a modified so we have a transfer to the field and we have this is the flowering this is the pot formation this is the fruit formation and we have seen the molecular things how it, whether it is a um, compared to the control how whether our gene in progress or not so that we have succeeded and in the meantime also we have developed to the rice also in case of the rice some of the varieties and we have used for the this is the gene we have introduced to the rice and we have verified this to the molecular marker molecular analysis then this is the t1 generation t2 generation then transfer to the field this is a drought resistance and a salinity resistance rice and that also we have uh, developed and for this then rni rni this is the interference of this gene silencing and the, the substantial advantage of plant disease management strategy the global food supply is still threatened by multiple pathogen and multiple pests. The not a single pathogen is attacking. The attacking by this is the multiple pathogen and pest. So on there, RNI technology is the one of the potential and promising strategy for enhancing and resistance in the plants, and which is to combat various fungal, bacterial, viral, nematode diseases for the loss of important agricultural crops. So RNA silencing used as a reverse tool of genetic targeting fungi, and it is a co-suppression of the particular transgenes or antigens, and so that it can be the plant can be able to silence it cannot be able to infect it to particular diseases. This is the small example and the RNA interference. How is the RNA? The dice are bind to the double standard RNA into single standard RNA, and how? They mix together cleavage formation and mRNA sequences, number of protein are produced in knockdown. So, and this is the genetic engineering of the plump plux virus and the honey switch plump. And this is the exam published in the, uh, this is the published in the, by this uh, Czech Republic. And they have a, also in Canada and America, they have a, the, this is the viral diseases. There is a number of the pruners and the pruners and the plum also have affected and damage a lot. And many of these you see, fruits is damaged by this. The farmers are not getting any income from this. For that, they have developed the gene silencing method. And the fruit deformation reduced to the, the premature fruit drop, leaf chlorosis, that all will be happen. And you see the fruit is have been damaged by this the diseases. So it is, if you um, the, cut in the fruit, you can see inside there is also damage. So there is a no commercial value and no export value. So they have a thinking and a lot of fruits in, fall in the, um, the in your the seeds and the leafy also chlorosis. So they have a think how to control this diseases in viral diseases. So they have a, so many countries, Czech Republic, Greece, Spain, Bulgaria, all the countries survey and they have seen that 20 to 60 percent and infection levels and they have they, they had did for this silencing of the gene silencing to the rni technology so in rni technology gene insertion and they have used the viral code proteins gene modified and they have this is done in 90 they have started the initial genetic engineering seen in 1996 after six years they have able to succeed their uh, data and they have a product. And in 1990, they have initial and uh, genetic engineering and a greenhouse testing resistance. They have uh, tested in the field determination of the resistance mechanism. And also they have a, uh, still I will not take the class. So they have, uh, they have, uh, conducted the experiment after in 20 years the field testing and this variety is a very prominent variety and this variety is have a natural infected pbv virus 
the rapid and the white flies that have been controlled and they have been succeeded. This is the great example in the in virus uh, protection of the virus. And also, this is the RNA technology, how this virus, how they have done the success of the inside of the mechanisms. And this is the flies. You see the flies is coming from one to one, and they're coming to the power clonin, and is coming, here is the fruit, and the fruit is in fact in the plants, and it has been in decline. The non-GM and the GM. Non-GM is having affected the GM, they didn't succeed. They have succeeded all for the production of point of view. So genetic engineering is in, initially 1996, they have input the traits, herbicide and insecticides and represent first generation GM crop benefit to the farmer also for environmental benefit. Second generation, they include added value product, nutrient enhancement for the animal feed. Consumer will benefit directly from this product. Third generation crop to produce pharmaceutical improving processing bias fuel fuel also product beyond the traditional food fiber and this at present there is a in all this generation first generation gm varieties became commercially available they are widely adopted in usa farmers and this is the canada and also this is the china also having as a great impact on the genetic modified crops so these are the year-wise and the 2017, how it is coming to the adaptation rate. One is the product development of the protocol. One is the utilized by this is the marker mechanism. Another way is the how it is adapt to the system, how it farmer will adapt to the protocol so that it will, it will be neutralized to the, the livelihood support to the poor farmers. That is also most important. Compare in the all input output, how it will be adopted in the natural condition. And the genetic manipulation mostly applied in agriculture, horticulture as resistance to the, it is also useful in the animal case also. The last 22 years of commercialization by crop in 1996 to 2017 in biotech crop have been delivered substantial agronomic environmental, economic, health, social benefit of the farmers. And that is the data of the 2017 data. And this is the total hectare from this data has been collected. And this million of hectare have been enhanced. 28 biotech crops country is now 29 is having, they have adopted this technology and be utilized. And some of the country have been commercialized and these are these countries which are the crop is approved. You see in the most of the Japan, they are adopting and many, many crops. So in Singapore and Switzerland, Taiwan, Thailand, Malaysia, all these countries, they have also adopting this technology. And these are the developers in India also, many private companies also now is taking the initiative and approved by this government agency and the Department of the Forest, Department of the Health, and the Department of the Environment. There is a community, that is a committee of the each one, and the committee will approve, but they have not, depends on the parliament, they will not able to chance for the commercialization, but the protocol have been trial, and the trial have been a success, and it has been kept the protocol with us. So these are the trait potato, so many traits, and the potato, the soybean also, apple also, the forest tree also, because biomass is essential, that is a firewood also, the enhancing firewood, also tannin, also honey, that also utilized by this, adopting this, this, and this is the, how this plant and many secondary product also, secondary product is synthesized root, what I have told from the beginning, and this is the agrobactum rhizogenesis, how rhizogenesis entered to the help to the root secondary product, synthesizes the root, transport to the aerial part, agrobactum rice soil bacteria into first growing adventitious root. And it has been, the, that is called as a hairy root structure. And this is the, one of the example. This is our research, it has been published. 
So this is the in vitro regeneration is Kalme like the Kalme you might have known most of the participant in from Odisha. So the Androgopis paniculata, how this root have been developed and you see, and to see the SPTLC, how this is comparing to the transform and non-transform plants to enhance the andrographolite's product. That we have seen is the root is, how root is multiplying here, only root. So root to have to have to synthesize and do the analysis and see the productivity. And this is the company which when I was visiting in Germany, I have seen their secondary product from the plant-based product. They have in a means they have a pharmaceutical institute, international institute, they are using for the production of the secondary product. And this is the molecular farming, which I have already shown. This is a so many, you will see the genetically modified fruit, genetically modified flower, blue rose you might have heard in 2000 and 2002. And this is a genetic modified bacteria and genetic modified animal also. So they have a, also cabbage. Have initially, this is the original cabbage. Now it's, all the cabbage you have seen. Now, is most of the, though we have not adopted, most of the crop have been cultivated and they have brought by the farmer in the neighboring state, they are also cultivating. This is the genetic modified, the, the cabbage, cauliflower, and all they have developed. And this is the one of the ginger turmeric, and this is the tomato and the corn maize also. They have developed, this is the cloned animals, the animal which have same characters and they are the parents, parents. And this is also instant pig also. Now is the pig you have to, many of the country they have a use, they are taking the pig as their meat and they, so they have a protein rich. So they have a, developed the genetic they modified a pig for this use. And uh, this is having the genetic insulin production, what you have human insulin, they multiply millions of bacteria, they're carrying the, having the produce the human insulin, recombinant DNA technology, you see. And this is a efficient bioremediation program and the, they have effort have been made to create genetically engineered microorganism, which is uh, used for this enhanced to the bioremediation, growth of microorganism, reduce the genobiotics and uh, this is the, so that plant will be survive in the field and there will be no toxic effect. And the many, uh, many uh, product has been utilized now in the field for the, um, this is the bioremediation and also this plant, uh, this technology also used for the phytoremediation. And these are the substrate can be degraded. This is uh, the bacteria which can be used, used for the degraded in case of the product. So this transgenics, and the fish also, the production of the transgenic fish, much easier producing other transgenic animals. Because fish produce large number of eggs can generate a large quantified genetically uniform material for the experiment. It's very easy. Because you have to a lot of material, you can able to do the research. In 1985, they have a succeeded of the human GS gene, G, um, GH gene to the fertilized egg of the goldfish. And they have a, all they have used, and they have a developed the transgenic fish, which is a, many of the aquatic fishes who are aquatic animal also, it's now been modified. Though we are in the lacking back in other countries in a develop, developed country, they have used for this. And how they have used for the development of the fish, for the transgenic fish, which fish having the protein rich and also iron these proteins. And this is the color fish, what you have seen, and that also jellyfish also, they have also using for the cloning experiment and is modified. Transgenic growth enhance of the number of the fishes. And these are the, and another is the rice, is the ancient, uh, this is the one of the experiment. And the India ranks second production consumption of rice, rice and need from the 85 percent to calories of daily diet and the, this is the protocol which i have shown in the transgenic here is the rice for the salinity and a drought and we have a transferred here in a brassica genes and plant gene and bj2 and bj3 genes 
Blastica juncia gene transfer to the plant system. And again, we have seen the physiological, biochemical, and molecular mechanisms to study the yield analysis, water stress analysis. Then we have a detail. Then physiological root growth also. This experiment also we have conducted, and it has been also published in the international journals. And genome editing, which I have uh, the, the transgenic research now is to pass over to genome editing techniques. And the genome editing techniques, though progress has been made in the past 20 years, but the scientist has to utilize in this nowadays and gradually, the more rapidly got the Nobel Prize is PCR technology and how this edit of the CRISPR-Cas9 technology they have used and they have, a, they have tools have been revolutionized in agriculture, improve the crops, important traits, including yield, nutritional characteristics, quality of the protein, oil types, improve our the crop tolerance to environmental conditions, salinity. So many uh, the CRISPR cache technology, genome editing technology have been used, have been used. And uh, this is the talents, which is the another uh, technology and practical application in plant science. And other bioscience also, it has been used to improve the traits in rice, wheat, and other crops. The tunnel, that tools also have been used. And what is meaning of the talent? Talents are the tool precise the gene editing. You see, they have a cut in the undesired year. If you want to modify it, suppose you have to select, this is the gene you have to silence. You have to cut it from this. So you have to use these tools so that this nucleus got the DNA and the nucleus that commonly used from the talent so that it can be joined again. This is the right, talent, this is the right and the left talent. So you can be modified the nucleotide and transfer to the plants. No need to go for the so many things to do the so many precise technique has been come out in 2020, 21. And this is the crop which has been developed to the talents. Crop traits modified using the talents, the oil quality, bacterial blight also, aroma, this is the scented rice. Also reduced acrylamide, this is the acrylamide and cholesterol in potato, that also modified, that is the crown you are using, and the powdery mildew also resistance, that all, all this product they have used have been published has been commercialized in abroad for this using this technique technology, and this is the uh, the genetic modified genetic editing technology has been used in the Canada, but it is not regulated. Some of the because this is a regulatory body. Every country their own regulatory body. India we have also. And every country they have own regulatory body, but those who are a directed genetic transformation in the they have a used for this it come under regulatory body. That is a um, that is a by safety committee, and every country and they will verify data. They will verify this result. They verify to the how it is be negative, positive to the society. But those who are producing the genome editing craft, genetic editing product, genome editing product, this is not regulated by this committee. In the, particularly in Canada and the USA, and the most of the most of the is not regulated of the edited. In United States, Canada, Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, all the India, in the Bangladesh, GMO has been utilized, but it encompass genome editing, and uh, this is a discussion still is. A, under progress mainly by using the in India, using the genome edited crop. But in most of the country, they have a free to given to the society or commercialized of the edited. This is the difference between the genome edited crop, gen genetic modified crop. And uh, this is India is a leading producer, this consumer of the, this is uh, already I have uh, Shown this is the pulses, how this is circuspora, lispor, this is powdery mildew, and affected. This is our uh, this result, the CRISPR Cas technique. Also, we are using the CRISPR Cas uh, techniques by uh, this is the networking project with the United Kingdom and the OUAT as well as the BHU. And uh, these two universities from India and uh, one institute from the United Kingdom, we have a collaborating proje project. 
and funded by Department of Biotechnology Government of India to what is the aim? Aim is to develop to the, uh, this is the Mugbin plants, which do not have disease of the Sarcospora and the powdery mildew. So Mugbin having the three diseases, why is it YMB? On the one is the virus, one is the, two is the fungus. But the government has given allowed to work only two diseases, the Sarcospora and whisper disease, and the powdery mildew disease. That uh, this needs, and uh, this is under the DBT BBSRC Newton Hava project. This is the result which I have shown in there. Also, this is the melogen we have we have a transfer. That and another one is the you can able to overexpression of the aluminium activated malate transporter gene. So that we have a lot of uh, soil is the acid soil. So in the acid soil and the plant it can't grow in the acid soil. So you have to develop these plants which is having tolerant to the acid soil, iron ditch. So that uh, you have to say over expression of the alt one aluminum activated malate transporter gene and the comfort to the aluminum tolerance in the transgenic black gram. Black gram is the, this is the bigna mugo. And this aluminum immiscible mallet re, they release to the role in the rhizotoxic stress. The mallet transporter critical role in aluminum tolerance. Aluminum tolerance means it is a acidic soil. So mallet is released uh, specific to aluminum among rhizotoxic stressor, cadmium, and low pH. So aluminum toxicity due to soil acidity inhibit growth and function will and which increase other stress also, mineral nutrient deficiency, drought. The improving the aluminum tolerance is important target for the plant breeding. So that breeder will be again, it is having the tolerant one, they can able to do the breeding system. This is the huge technology, these are the, this is the gene. And that gene we have introduced to the plant system and with me in the last 10 years. So this uh, Pandit Javangar said, the science, science alone that cannot solve the problems of hunger. The poverty and the incitation and the literacy and the superstition of the deadening customs, tradition, past resources, running waste, and a rich country inhabited by these strapping people. So give a science to a chance that he said in 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 his speak, and this is uh, this is the one of the book and uh, and uh, is published is the transgenetic engineering in horticulture crops in 2018 it has been published, and uh, thank you very much for listening and uh, about to this talk. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for uh, vast information about uh, genetically modified food. Here are some questions from our party sprint, sir. Yeah, yeah. The first Please. question. Uh, seeds yeah. have been modifying genetically for better disease resistance and more yield. Yeah. Are these modifications don't have any effect on human genetics and are to any disease in long term? Yeah, you see, uh, we are in India, we are only cultivating in the GM so far, but protocol abroad, in abroad, in USA, Canada, even in the last uh, commercial. Hello? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, they are cultivating, but nothing is happened. You see that before releasing the any variety GM crop, there is a lot of uh, bioregulatory system is there. 
every biodiversity system, every testing, if it will be positive, then it will be passed on because it has been uh, examined in the pollutory, it has been examined in the goat, it has been examined also in buffaloes, in cows, in the crop environment, biodiversity, in all the angle it has been, before releasing every country, they have testing. That is a bioregulatory body committee. So nothing is happened till now. Nothing, there is a no published literature available till now, negative. So positive is there, but people, uh, these uh, scientists are thinking maybe the diversity of the pest or the, uh, the this is the insect pest maybe of the contaminant maybe mutant when nothing happen. when they are cultivating they are also putting some of the some of the lines which is a, is a this wild lines they are also putting. So that which any any pest the, the insect they will eat their own original food. That also nothing has been reported so far. Any literature not available. Thank you, sir. Another question, sir. Cost effectiveness of GM crops can, and can non -GM, non -GM like crops. India afford it? India is cultivating only cotton. Yes. They are very much, uh, the farmers are very much benefited in Odisha also, Kalahandi, uh, Bolangis, they are cultivating Maharashtra, they are cultivating a lot of the uh, acres of the cotton. They are, uh, they are not uh, putting there uh, so much that 30% uh, across uh, this the chemical cost they have reduced. That is uh, because you know, if is, uh, when you are putting some of the chemical insecticide pesticides, and it is a uh, soil is going to be the contaminated and the soil health is will down. So if it, they have a reduced to the um, soil health, that is uh, improving the soil health, they're not able to spray. When they're spraying 20 times, now they're spraying one times. So reduce a lot, they're um, earning a lot in cotton. Other crop, then any literature and information available in the abroad, there is there a lot benefited. You, you see, you see, China is using all genetic modified food. See, so this is the information are available. Anything else, please? Thank you, sir. Another question, sir. Farmers yeah. showed resistance to genetically modified crops. Hmm. How do these transgenic crops affect the traditional farmers? Traditional farmer, adaptation. Yes, yes. Yeah, adaptation, I have shown you some of the graph. The developing country, they are very slow. But developed country, they are very fast. Developing country, they are very slow. The farmers, they need to be, they need to more, uh, more uh, advertisement and more uh, educated, they need more educa education. They need more the interaction. There is a lot of things is required to adopt any things in the society. So there is a need for this uh, adaptation uh, point of view. There is a need, there's a lot of uh, like the WhatsApp, like to the interaction, like to the explanation. Then only they can, but the traditional farmer, they didn't know what is this, what is that. So only the modern farmer, those who are young farmers now, they're able to understand. That's why the India we are in lacking. Hello. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And another question, sir. Yeah. Is it possible to have rapid and point care diagnostics by farmers themselves for individual crop and for all the pathogens? What is its status in India? No, no. Well, all pathogen you have to you can say because we are a, we are transferring a single gene particular major diseases. If causal organism is a major diseases, we can able to control it. If some of the pathogen is, is a minor one but is a causing of the, uh, during the post section, it cannot be. So it you have to again multi gene you have to transfer. So that is a very few references, very little success about this. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for this uh, very elaborate and informative presentation. Okay. The way you walked us through the raising population, the demand for more food to feed the large number of mouths was excellent. You spoke yeah. about transgenic breeding, a new topic to most of us. 
it is uh, hearing to know how these genetical modifications can be done to most foods and introduced into our food chain uh, we are sure the illustrious presentation would be very useful to the all the participants understanding this topic thank you very much sir thank you thank you and i am one of the request to the dr naik please madam uh, and uh, don't uh, few of the, my slide don't share to uh, other you can give but my research don't give to anyone sir i'll take Please. care of that sure okay. sir okay thank you yeah, thank sir. you very much thank you thank you so Thanks much sir uh, i must say, i must say that uh, your research is uh, purely scientific deep rooted and very informative and in spite of your busy schedule that you could be able to make it uh, uh, thank you so much and as we continue you know to master in science we appreciate your time and effort that uh, you have given for this university and also for the other institutions all the faculty members for educating all of us thank you so much sir thank you thank namaskar you namaskar thank you namaskar sir now we will close no 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 and uh, another uh, i am requesting no no we are not closing here participant to join another interesting session by tomorrow at 9 am gautami ma'am we are not ending the session here Uh, let me share Over some information with the participants yes esteemed participants uh, let me share some informations with you tomorrow yeah. is the last session of our faculty development program and uh, okay. uh, you know as per the availability of the resource portion tomorrow okay. our session yeah. will start at 9 am and our zoom session will open at 8:30 am we will be admitting all the participants uh, starting from 8:45 pm and regarding the uh, certif e certificate uh, yes anushya please yeah okay so uh, e certificate as uh, 100% attendance in all the six sessions uh, uh, required and attendance will be taken per zoom register this is automated uh, there will be uh, we will be providing you 10 uh, multiple choice questions and uh, the feedback form as because this is the standing instructions from the higher education department government of odisha and you have to answer it back within 5 minutes and 50% marks in the mcqs responses are required and e certificate will be sent to you to your registered email id thank you very much so we are ending the session uh, for today now so we will meet uh, tomorrow at 9 am thank you very much till then bye bye take care thank you